Welcome, welcome, patrons. We are back on our Chantry Bullshit to talk about the reason it all exists in the first place. The Maker. The Myth. The Chant of Light tells us the Maker first created the Fade and the Spirits. His first children could do anything they wanted, but they were unable to create anything original. So, honest to God, this is the lore, he thought they were so boring, he created Thetis and people, separating it by the veil, and was pleased that they were able to create new things and just be interesting. Now, weirdly enough, the Chantry holds that the Maker has created everything in the known world. Except for the dwarves. Um, this leaves a lot of questions like, Hey, Mr. Chantry, do you mean to say that the dwarven people were just floating in a void before the Maker clapped his hands and poof, there was everything? Uh, but uh, the reason for this belief is that dwarven souls just aren't seen in the Fade, and... Um, uh, this honestly just goes down a whole line of thinking that, like, it, it kind of, like, just is messy. <laughs> I just don't want to get into it right now. So we're just going to quickly forget I said this and move on. Anyway, the Maker's first children saw mankind and were jealous. So seven powerful spirits whispered to the Maker's second children from across the veil and turned them against the Maker and to worship these spirits instead. These seven would become the old gods and this action of man worshiping them known as the original sin. The Maker was angry, so imprisoned the old gods underground and just sort of left to sulk in the Golden City in the Fade. Years go by, and the second sin happens, where magisters break into the Golden City to visit the Maker, but they blacken it with their sins. The Maker, again upset, threw them from heaven and turned them into the first dark spawn. After the first blight had ended, Andraste was singing in a forest so beautifully, the Maker heard her and wanted to take her as his bride. She begged the Maker to forgive his people, and he said he would on the condition that they worship him again. So she goes out into the world to spread his message, and that if every person in the world sang his praises, he would return once more. I'm not going to talk much about Andraste here, but long story short, she's captured and killed, and the Maker turns his back on mankind once again, assumedly with the spirit of Andraste by his side. And so the Maker silently watches Thetis, only helping those select few that follow his ways so that they will be by his side in his kingdom. Fitting in with history. So if you are familiar with the world of Thetis, there are already some questions coming to your mind, namely things that were brought up in Trespasser. If we take the Chantry at their word, which we should keep in mind, they could easily have everything wrong about the Maker, then things are just, um, like a little bit wonky. Uh, we know that Solus made the Veil, and before then, the Fade and the Waking World were the same place. So, for the moment, let's pretend that the Chantry just didn't mean everything so literally. So when they say the Fade in their story, it's the combination Fade-Waking World of Solus's time. Okay, fine. So, the Veil goes up, and now you have the two worlds and people. Now, this actually works with the Elven legend, as humans didn't pop up until the Veil happened anyway. The worship of the old gods and their whispers to humanity is well documented, but other than the maker myth, we aren't really sure how the old gods were imprisoned underground. So, I, I don't know, maybe the maker did throw them down there, but I am willing to put money on the fact that we're going to find out that's not true. Now, history from there on out kind of gels with the Chantry version for the most part, minus when the magisters broke into the Golden City. For one, Corypheus, who was one of the ones who broke into the Golden City, claims that it was empty. There was no maker. Further, a pretty solid fan theory is that the Golden City is actually the ruins of Arlathan. Now, why would the maker of all, except for the dwarves apparently, take over the ruins of a city, but uh, not actually be in the city he took over? You can make some excuses, like the maker was just not showing himself to the unworthy magisters, or something like that, but more likely scenario is just that the Chantry is wrong about the importance of the Golden City, unless we are thinking of the maker the wrong way. Who is the Maker? So there are a billion theories on who and what the Maker is, but they sort of divide into two categories. The first category takes the Chantry at their word, and that there is a huge, all-knowing, powerful being that created everything. Who is that being, we ask? Perhaps he is a powerful spirit, like the Nightmare Demon, given reality thanks to the faith of the people. Maybe when Andraste came around, there was not actually a Maker, but centuries of strong faith? There is one suddenly, a giant positive spirit that calls himself as such and maybe even protects the souls of the Fade. Perhaps, as seen in Timidor Nights, he is something not of the Fade or of the Waking World. Something like the Sikorax or whatever it was, but not evil. Um, some strange being that we just have never seen before. The second category believes that the Chantry, much like the Dalish Pantheon, is mistaken. Something got twisted in the line of telephone and Andraste was contacted by just some powerful person than an actual god. 
probably the most popular one that I see floating around that exists is the second category, and is Solus is the maker. Out of all the maker theories, this one probably holds the most substantial amount of water because he did do a lot of the things that the maker is said to have done. He created the veil and likely chilled out in the Golden City slash Arlathan, but I guess the real question is if he contacted Andraste or not. Now, he would totally be capable of doing so in the Fade, and he would even have a motive, as Andraste did have a big hand in creating the elven homeland of the Dales. Uh, I mean, they got destroyed, but that's another story. But uh, she also helped the rebelling elven slaves. But a good question to ask is if we found that Solus or some other nameable entity in our strange, powerful creature box is responsible for Andraste's visions, does that mean the Maker isn't real? I'm sure a bunch of you just yelled yes at the screen, and it's totally possible Bioware chooses to do that as well, but there is one little line in the world of Thetis that I find interesting. From an early age, Andraste suffered troubling dreams of a then-obscure god known as the Maker. An obscure god. Someone was worshipping him before. Who were they and what did they believe? We have no idea. But from this, it sounds like Andraste didn't create the idea of the Maker. There may come a time when we find a cult of the Maker that was pre-Andrastian and a lot of cool things come to light. However, it's pretty clear that the current Chantry has um, a lot of facts messed up, but I don't think that means that we should throw the baby out with the bathwater. In a world of magic and demons, a dragons, a good god that created everything doesn't seem that far-fetched at all. But I would like to say this. The Maker is at his most interesting when he is unknowable. There is no satisfying answer to his question, because in a lore that is so focused on corruption of power and godhood, he isn't actually a question at all. He's the answer. The only truly good god is one that is absent and gives the ultimate freedom of life and might not even exist. What makes the Maker interesting is the faith surrounding him, and any exploration further into what he is misses the point entirely of why he was put into the lore to begin with. Does a god become corrupt when those that worship him do? And that, dear patrons, is all that I have on The Maker. Do Silver and Crane questions, proof that I'm wrong, comments about your own fan theory. Feel free to tweet me at Gilderthon on Twitter or send a PM to user Gilanon on Reddit. Doresh Sheral.